people good afternoon how are we all doing hopefully all doing very very well don't forget hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel don't forget as well to like and share the vids also don't forget give me a follow on instagram if you haven't already done it ade oladipo um you won't regret it loads of content coming your way all right where should we start should we start with where i was last night in sheffield uh, a next gen show headlined by dalton smith versus sam mason for the vacant super lightweight title Dalton Smith getting the victory with a six round stoppage. Yeah, it was a six round stoppage. It's funny because me and Tony sat with Dalton uh, or spoke to Dalton last week. And I said, look, I know a lot of fighters don't like to give predictions, but what are you predicting? And he said six round stoppage <laughs> and he got the job done. Um, should have had a couple of quid on it. Fuck's sake. He looks good, doesn't he? He looks like, you know, I don't like to jump the gun, but there is something special about Dalton Smith. And I guess for Matram, you know, when they're looking at sort of their next stars, right? Because everyone's been talking about the Matram stable and where are the next stars. He could be that guy. He might just be. I think there were around 5,000 in there yesterday. Don't get me wrong. A lot of them were for Johnny Fisher. I think about 1,000 tickets. But the rest really were for Dalton Smith. So he could be that guy. Um, obviously now British champion. Will he defend that belt? I don't know, two more times to win it outright. I don't know. Will he look at the European champion? Will they try and fast track him? I'm not sure. But just watching him yesterday, um, he's clearly a very good boxer. Uh, Galau Yafai was with me in studio and I was always asking him in between rounds, like, you know, talk to me about Dalton Smith, obviously, because they're both part of Team GB. And he already said, look, he is very, very good. And he knew that he would be sort of more suited to the pro ranks than to the amateur setup. And so far, so good. What is that? 12 wins. Uh, uh, tw uh, 10 knockouts it's not bad look there will be harder fights for him um, just at domestic level let alone European and world level you think of fighters like O'Hara Davis Akeem Ennis Brown Sam Maxwell who vacated the title to fight for the IBO title got stopped in that but so there's those guys there and then you know a step above that then you get to the likes of Jack Catchell and then I guess the top dog who is Josh Taylor, which I'm not trying to say is anywhere near ready for that. But look, I mean, if you're a fighter, that's what you should be thinking. You should be thinking if you're Dalton Smith and look, Josh won't stay around at 140, but you should be thinking, I, I want that guy in 18 months, two years. I mean, think of how fast track Josh was. I mean, Josh, after 11 or 12 fights, went there. So if you're Dalton Smith and you're good enough, then they might fast track him. But look, he looks good. Uh, Sandy Ryan, a co-main event, got her revenge against Erica Farias. Just physically, Sandy Ryan looked a lot better. It wasn't a fight that I thought got going. But for Sandy, it isn't about engaging and trying to please the crowd. It's about making sure you get the W. Because you lose back-to-back -back fights against Farius. <laughs> Look, she'll always come back because um, she, what, she's only 25 and uh, women's boxing isn't sort of that deep, is it? She, she'll always get a chance, but it's a long way back. Now... Um, she'll defend that belt once, once more thanks to WBC International and then she'll wait to see what happens between Chantel Cameron and Jessica McCaskill. Again, because it's not that deep, if you are talented, you will get pushed to a world title crack straight away. So um, well done to Sandy Ryan. It was funny, Erica sort of celebrated in the ring like she thought she won. I was like, have I been watching the wrong fight? You know, I had it a few rounds to Sandy Ryan. Um, did you guys see the face off between those two and Erica speaking? in Spanish and she is going, going for Sandy Ryan. It reminded me, and I think I tweeted this, it reminded me of that that boss lady in Ozark. If you guys haven't seen it, you'll know. Oh, guys, if you have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Jordan Thompson, what a strange fight that was. I mean, look, for nine rounds, nine and a half rounds, I was like, this is a solid performance. Um, Vassil Duca, um, is a big guy, very, very big at the weight. Almost Chris Billum Smith kind of stocky and his legs and his back, really strong cruiserweight. And I was like, he's just outboxing him. This is good because, look, we know Jordan Thompson can punch, but we don't know about his gas tank because he's been knocking people over in a couple of rounds. Um, let's see what happens if a guy pushes him to 10. And, you know, me and Tony were like, you know, this is good. This is a decent performance. And it's, it's funny because uh, we had, this is the zone, we had like this list of sort of, 10 heavy, 10 cruiserweights in Britain that would like to see him fight next and was just about to throw to that list and then he went down. And I'm like, what's going on? I genuinely thought he weren't going to get up. Honestly, it got to like five or six and I was thinking, look, just get up. The bell's gone. You've been saved. Like literally, you've been saved by the bell. 
just get up. And then he got to seven and eight. And I was like, he he's going to lose. And then obviously he got up. Um, look, you'll learn from it. He'll learn from that. I mean, you can't switch off for a second against guys um, that are in and around you. Like, I don't know if he's better than, well, he is better than Vasil Duka. I think we saw that, but you can't switch off against those guys. Um, he's jumped up a couple of levels here. And maybe the jump and the push was maybe just one level too far. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's easy to say in hindsight, but look, he nearly got knocked out. So they're going to have to go back and work on a few things. I spoke to his trainer after and, you know, he, he did say a few things to me that I can't repeat here, but they'll go back and work on what they need to work on. Um, what else? Johnny Fisher, the run for ball, uh, got a stoppage. Campbell Hatton's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, I don't know what match from do there, you know. I mean, that's his, I think, eighth fight. Um, obviously turned pro March 2021, so he's been pro for, what's that now, 15 months. There are improvements. He, he does look physically a lot bigger. But um, I don't know, man. Like, I was thinking, I was going to ask the question after, like, is he ready for an area title? He's, he's not. Um, look, he, it's still a work in progress, but how long can you... Like how long can you keep doing these type of opponents? Like, what would you, would you do 15 fights, 20 fights? Like, what, when, when is it a case of, okay, we need to see something? The only sort of saving grace for me with Campbell is that, look, we know he trains like a bull. This guy doesn't stop training. And he will look at someone like Conor Ben, who, again, people, I think Conor Ben's ability was a lot better early, but people will kind of try and make comparisons where Conor didn't look good early either. Now, I mean, people are talking about Connor as one of the best world weight prospects in the world. So if you're Campbell, you look at that and think, you just got to keep chipping away, keep chipping away, and it will come. Um, I think he's looking better. He's, he's not as sort of punch happy. Like before, he used to just fucking throw punches and bunches without any sort of idea about what he's doing. Now you see that he's trying to dig to the body, takes it upstairs with the left as well. Like he's thinking. And I guess we can only, we can only credit that. Um, let's quickly cross over to the States. Michael Mickinson, brave performance against Virgil Ortiz, but in the end, Virgil Ortiz shows that why he's one of the best welterweights on the planet. Um, there's no shame in what Michael Mickinson did because Virgil Ortiz will probably do that to 97% of the welterweights. Like, you really, like, really and truly, you probably can only say that he won't do that to Crawford, Spence, and maybe Boots Ennis. He could do that to Furman, he could do that to everyone. So there's no shame in Mickinson's performance. Uh, what I wanted Mickinson to do was cause Virgil T some problems, which I think he did, just so that he doesn't just vanish. Do you know what I mean? I want Mickinson to get more opportunities, make some more money. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing Mickinson versus Cobbs. Blair Cobbs, who got the win over Morris Hooker. I wouldn't mind seeing that. And maybe, I mean, look, this is now back-to-back -back fights for Mickinson in America. Maybe that's just where he stays. You know, he's built up some sort of a name over there. Maybe you just stay there and you have those fights. There are opponents out there, Alexis Rocha. There are opponents out there that he can fight. And Mickinson, I think we know this now, ain't afraid to fight anyone. Ain't afraid to fight anyone. As for Virgil Ortiz, he looked okay. Remember, he's been out the ring for quite a while. Um, I think his last performance was Caviolescas, so he's been out a while. Um, it was funny, Chris Mannix is obviously asking him about Terence Crawford. By the way, Terence looked thick ringside. I don't know if you guys saw the, the video footage of Terence. It looked really big. Um, look, if Terence isn't going to fight Errol, then fuck it. Just do it. You know what I mean? Let's do it. It's, 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 it's rare that you get these type of matchups. You know what I mean? The, the veteran against the, the hungry, young, upcoming, sort of tough world to wait. But look, if Terence isn't going to get the Errol fight and... I don't know what's going on. Has he signed a deal with PBC or Al Alheim? I don't know what's going on. But if not, then look, just fight. Just fight because it's going to get to the stage where Terence is out the ring for a year. And it's just getting silly, right? Terence isn't in his 20s anymore. I think he's, what, 34. So, yeah, ain't happening. Guys, we are less than two weeks away from Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk. Um, this time, in two weeks' time, like 100,000 videos will be made about the result. Um, I fly out on the 17th. Um, obviously, I'm going to do stuff for the YouTube channel 100%. Someone's lending me a camera. Thank you very much to that person because these ones are just not good enough. 
Um, I do some stuff for TalkSport. I do some stuff for the Zone. Um, I've seen a little clip that's floating around. It's literally three seconds of Alexander Usyk. Just um, looks like he's getting ready for a sparring session. Um, looks a lot thicker. It's difficult to tell because of lighting and stuff, but he does look big. Um, I think this guy's now fully settled into the heavyweight division. His body's starting to fill out a bit as well. Um, I, I guess, you know, with it being, what, 13 days exactly out, sparring, maybe one more sparring session for AJ, um, but it really should be that. Um, now it's just making sure that mentally he's in the right place and tactically they've got some sort of game plan. Look, it, with AJ not having spent that long a time with Robert Garcia, game plan will go out the window if he gets if he gets hit. He will fucking hopefully see the red mist and turn into Incredible Hulk and do some damage. Uh, that's what I hope. Um, I, I just want to see, regardless of the result, look, I want AJ to win, obviously, but regardless of the result, I just want to see a much better AJ than we saw, um, when was it, September? Was it September, October? I just want to see a much better AJ. I'm not asking for much because it wasn't a great age. It was, he, he probably won two or three rounds. Um, I just want to see him do more than that this time. I want to see him be a bit aggressive. It's funny, I was watching um, AJ versus Klitschko. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember, but the fifth round when he put Klitschko down, he came out like a madman possessed. Like literally, don't get me wrong, he gassed out in that round as well. But he came out like a crazy man and just jumped on Klitschko. Now... <sighs> that AJ might not exist anymore and maybe he can't do that against Alexander Usyk but you know he has to get his respect early he's going to have to dent Usyk early M my fear is that if he doesn't dent Usyk and Usyk starts to get comfortable and starts to get into that rhythm where he goes side to side and left to right and does all sorts of bullshit then Usyk just goes through the gears and fuck me I mean this guy's got more gears than a Bugatti you know what I mean? How many fucking gears have they got? Nine or ten or some bullshit. If he goes for the gears, then we have a problem. But if AJ can dent him, so this guy starts to then think, whoa, one second, we have a fight, ladies and gentlemen. And I do think it's going to be a fight. If AJ does lose, I think he goes out and he's shield and fucking goes swinging. I don't think it's um, a, a, an Andy Ruiz sort of situation where he's in the corner and he looks confused. I think he goes out on his shield. And I think this is going to be something special. That's why um, I insisted, insisted on telling the zone, I'm going. If you guys ain't sending me, I'm going. Because I don't want to miss this one. And, and thank God my persistence paid off. And um, yeah, they're sending me out there, which is exciting. But yeah, we don't have long to wait. And it's good undercard as well, right? I mean, Cannon Smith on the undercard, Hergovic undercard, uh, Tyron Spong, Badu Jack. Excited to see this. Excited to see... I mean, I was there for the Ruiz fight and obviously, look, I'm not going to get into sort of the politics and all the shit that goes on in Saudi Arabia. But in, in terms of my own personal experience, I had one sketchy experience. But apart from that, it was fine. It was fine. I enjoyed it. They were, the hospitality was really good. I mean, like they put on like, they took us to um, the first press conference. Or was it a fighter workout? I can't remember, but they laid on like SUVs for everyone. Like literally, you shared an SUV with one person. Bear in mind, those fucking SUVs take up to five or six people. They picked everyone up from the hotel. So look, it was great. Um, but aside from all that, look, I just want the big man to win and I am fully behind him. Again, gun to the head, Usyk, but don't tell me AJ doesn't have a chance. I'm not, I'm not having that bullshit. I'm not having that. Very quickly, a lot of you have reached out to me about, where are they? Where's your Daniel Dubois Don King video? It's been taken down. Now, I'm not going to get into why it was taken down, but I'm guessing you guys can, you know, two plus two equals four and work out why it was taken down. I would not willingly take a video down. You guys um, get into it yourself. Uh, let's see what we've got here before we wrap. Um, Hopkins expects Canelo to beat down Golovkin, stop him in sixth or seventh. Don't know about that. I really don't know about that. I mean, even if you... you I mean, like... I don't know. You know what it is? The reason he might is because Golovkin likes to engage as well. Um, but I don't know, man. Stop Golovkin in six or seven. I mean, didn't stop Caleb Plant. I mean, it's Caleb Plant. But again, those fighters didn't really engage. Golovkin will engage and that's going to leave him open. So we'll see. And I guess we've got a fired up 
Canelo. I think it's going to be a really... Like if, even if Golovkin is stopped in six or seven, I think the first three or four are going to be explosive. Um, and I actually think that Golovkin will, as we saw against Murata, might sort of get better as the fight goes on. But we'll see. Uh, Team Chisora, Tyson Fury's handlers, have reached out to us for a trilogy fight. Weird. Uh, weird. Like, f for me, for, for a trilogy fight, like, surely it's got to be like one apiece or, or like in the Golovkin Canelo example, some controversy or something. I mean, Fury won these fights twice. The second one was bad. The second one was really bad. So, we, we, yeah, we do not need to see that at all. Um, I'm interviewing KSI tomorrow. Um, yeah, he's obviously not fighting Alex Wasabi. I, I hesitate because I don't know too much about all this. I need to educate myself a lot. But um, he's now fighting Swarms? Swarmsy? <laughs> it's a different world, isn't it? It's a completely different world. But I'm interviewing him tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to speak to him just because, I mean, I find this guy fascinating. I really, all these YouTubers, like when you speak to boxers, and I, I'm lucky I speak to a lot of boxers, like they fight because they A, want to become world champion or just be the best they can be. They want to, you know, sort of secure their family's future for years to come. KSI can't become a world champion and he's already worth hundreds and hundreds of millions. What is he doing? Like, why does he want to fight? Very interesting to ask. I'll tell you this though, yeah? And don't shoot me down, but this is fact. Like, if KSI were to fight Jake Paul, and now that, you know, I'm kind of in this YouTube boxing world, I've started to do a bit of research. There aren't, there aren't two financially bigger fights that can be made. The only one that jumps out immediately that will make more money than that is Fury AJ. Apart from that, I th honestly, it's a completely different world, but it's a world which is clearly very, very lucrative. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm about five minutes away from the West Ham Stadium. West Ham are playing Man City and I just heard a scream. It didn't sound like a big scream, so I'm going to check it. It might be 2-0 Man City, but I'm praying to God it's 1-0. Oh, no, it's still nothing happening now. Still, is it a penalty? Please, penalty, anything? Don't tell Man City of one set peeps. No, it's just a chance. Ah, is what it is. All right, um, where are we? Uh, yeah, we read that. Uh, good win uh, for Michael Conlon. He's back, beat Miguel Mariaga. Um, let's see. Let's see what happens. I mean, I still think, don't get me wrong, I understand why Lee Wood wants to fight Leo Santa Cruz. I get it, right? You've already beat uh, Conlon. But that was such a good fight. Like, they could have done that in the city ground. Filled that place. Half Forest fans, half Irish fans, loads of money. Um, but no. Um, uh, oh, it's steady, steady, Eddie. Tyson Fury against AJ is the biggest fight in the history of the sport. It is not. It is not. No, I, I don't know on what basis. Undisputed. I, I don't know what on, ba on what basis, but uh, no, no. Obviously, look, it, it will never, ever, ever eclipse that four point. Was it five million or whatever it was that Pac Man did against Mayweather? That was the biggest fight in the sport. Like two, two like pound for pounders. Two guys who literally for years were number one and number two pound for pound. Eight weight world champion against five or six weight world champion. Two guys that when it's all said and done and we look back at the history of the sport, Mayweather is a top 10 all time and Pacquiao top 10 all time. Like we've been, it, like, I know you get those older fans, oh no, 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 Sugar Ray Robinson, I get all that. Look at what Pac-Man and Mayweather did. That was the biggest fight. Come on, Eddie, man. Stop your nonsense, brother. Stop it. Stop. Uh, Sonny Edwards was out yesterday. He's a character. I was trying to set up um, him versus Galaya Fire, but the zone wouldn't have it. I guess you just don't trust what Sonny's going to say on air, do you? If I'm honest with you. But it was good to see him out. And I always, um, we'll end on this. I always find it strange when you do these boxing events, yeah? Everyone, because we're all staying in the same hotel in Sheffield. And it's weird, like, every, all the boxes just come back together. Like Samo Mason, I guess it must be the adrenaline. They're still very high. Everyone comes back and everyone has a laugh and all the boxes treat each other with so much respect. 
and everyone's just there talking. And it's still quite weird. You've got Keevan Ajarko's over there. He was there. Um, Ebony Bridges is there talking. Sky Nicholson's there. Everyone's there. Um, and it's just weird. It's just, it's just strange seeing all the fighters from different, um, different broadcasters all just there talking. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Um, we are done, I think. Very, very quick video. Um, two weeks to go. What are your predictions? Let me know. Peace.